Ah, in-class assignments. A time for the teacher to kick up her heels and relax for a... Wait a second. What do you think you're doing? Uh, I'm grading these papers on plate tectonics while my students are working on their assignments to depict the scientific method. It's called multitasking. Teachers have to multitask? I thought that was just a finance thing. <laughs> Please, if you want to know how to juggle six different things at once, ask a teacher. Wouldn't I ask a juggler? Hmm, just as I thought. Like so many students before them, they've gotten the impression that the scientific method is some rigid universal process with a discrete beginning and end. The way science is made is a bit more complicated than that. Not to mention unicorns haven't been around since at least the Middle Ages. Hold on. Did you just hear my inner monologue? I did. It's one of the perks of being an omniscient narrator. That in my own parking space. <clears throat> so much for catching some shut-eye. Another perfectly timed entrance. Your spidey senses must have been tingling. My students have an incomplete understanding of the scientific method, which naturally skews their perception of how science is made. How can I fill in the blanks and expand their understanding of science? Fill in what blanks? Those kids completely understand the steps of the scientific method. I mean, just look at Dimitri's drawing. All the elements are there. One, question. Two, hypothesize, etc. He seems to have this science thing down pat. Yeah, and I'm the prime minister of Spain. Hmm, someone woke up on the wrong side of the three-hole punch. Many students see the scientific method as akin to a recipe in a cookbook. Measure out one cup of question and dump into a mixing bowl. Add one cup of hypotheses and another cup of experiment. Mix and collect one cup of observed and recorded data that has floated to the surface. Sprinkle in a half a cup of analysis and... Presto! I don't see the problem. You wouldn't. That type of linear scientific method doesn't account for things like the use of a variety of methods, the importance of maintaining background knowledge to generate new ideas, the need to communicate and argue for ideas and interpretations with other scientists, and the fact that there's never really an endpoint. So, uh, does this mean we're not getting cake? I just think you're making this science thing far too complicated. All you need to do is just think deeply, or notice some pattern, and then poof! An aha or a eureka moment happens, and bam! You have your research question. Well, if you believe those are the only ways that research ideas are generated, then I have a bridge in Brooklyn I'd like to sell you. The joke's on you, because I already own a bridge in Brooklyn. Or at least I paid for one. I should own it as soon as that Nigerian prince returns my phone calls. Here's the skinny, partner. Science isn't made by running down a to-do list or pondering in a chair so long that you grow roots. Think of it more like taxi cabs moving around in a bustling city. Look here. Each taxi represents a research study. Where's that taxi going? It's starting a new project that stemmed from the results of a previous study conducted in its research lab, represented here by the taxi depot. Interesting. Does it have passengers? It sure does. The passengers they pick up are the tools they need for the study. They'll get dropped off in exchange for other tools as the study progresses. <laughs> Who gave this guy his medallion? He hit a dead end, and now he's heading back to where he started. Doesn't he have GPS in his car? That's just the thing. Sometimes lines of research inquiry don't work out, and scientists need to go back to square one. Sometimes, unexpected results occur, and researchers want to rerun a study to make sure the results weren't just a fluke. But why are there so many taxis? And a lot of them seem to be running similar routes. It seems like a waste. Well, sometimes many groups of scientists are studying the same questions, using the same methods. Other times, a group of scientists might study the same question, but come at it from a whole different angle, using different methods. Hey, that taxi suddenly changed its path. You'd think it would have planned out the route beforehand. Wrong again. 
See, even if scientists start out on one path, they might find something in the data that tells them that the direction of the research should be changed or narrowed to more directly answer the question. This is why scientists analyze their data as they go, not just at the end. Hmm, hold on a minute. That taxi took the off-ramp while the other taxi kept going. But they both reached the exact same destination. That ain't so surprising. Just like there's more than one way to skin a cat, there's more than one way to do a study that answers the same question. And in fact, scientists will sometimes purposefully try to replicate the results of a study using a different technique, method, or scale to see whether those results seem valid. Wow! I never realized how complex the scientific method is when you get down to the nuts and bolts of it. It's fascinating to see how the roots and cycles of doing science differ and repeat themselves during the course of a research study. Remember, just because science is messy, that doesn't mean anything goes. There are important things that make a study scientific. What ties all of these studies together is the fact that they are tested empirically, or based on evidence, and aim at explaining the world. Got it. I do messy really well. By the way, amazing visuals. Gum, when did you put those together? Living under a cruddy old desk isn't exactly riveting. Now I've got a lot of free time to do this stuff. And what's great is that you can replicate the complexity and interconnectivity you just saw in the classroom. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's illegal for students at that age to drive. Not with taxis, you horses. <clears throat> but toot. It's an interconnected web of practices that closely resemble how science is actually done. Modeling, designing investigations, generating explanations, engaging in argumentation. You get the picture. Okay, okay, I get it. Science doesn't follow a straight line. And blah de blah -de blah If that's true, then why do I keep hearing about scientists studying the same things today that they studied decades ago? Bloody blah my Aunt Fanny! Oof. Well, now that I'm here... I think I'll take this one, if you two delightful chaps don't mind. <laughs> Sorry about that, Terry. He just really boils my crawfish sometimes. All righty then, shall we? See, science is like a puzzle that builds upon itself. Scientists from around the world are asking questions that help to fill in the gaps and reevaluate our current knowledge about the natural world we live in. Do you see those black gaps in the puzzle? I do, Terry. Why aren't they filled in? Those are the gaps in our knowledge. Sweet! That gap is getting filled with a puzzle piece. Wait, that puzzle piece doesn't seem like it fits so well. That's because science builds on itself. And that ill-fitted piece is the best answer we have right now for how or why that process works. Over time, as more studies are conducted, more knowledge is gained and a better-fitting puzzle piece will replace the ill-fitting ones. So at what point is the puzzle complete? Therein lies the ultimate cosmic joke. Science will never be finished. In a constantly changing world, where new areas of science are being created and explored, new technologies and methods are being developed, and old ideas and theories are being re-examined, we will likely never have all the puzzle pieces which means we will never know all there is to know about the natural world we live in. That's so exciting! Positively delightful, isn't it? So what are we going to do about your students' scientific method drawings? We've got to help them understand that how science is made and the scientific method are not step-by-step -step linear processes. Perhaps you could revisit a few investigations they did with you earlier in the year and trace the steps you took in detail. What's completely brilliant is that you've been teaching with these practices all along. I'm confident that your students will be extremely successful with this type of approach. And I'll bet they'll find there was a lot more looping around and intermixing of practices involved than these current drawings suggest. That's a wonderful way to begin. I mean, you're right. We've been doing science all year, and yet it never felt like we were following some cookbook with steps. A little reflection on our past investigations could go a long way towards showing them the process of making science in its complex, messy glory. Speaking of complex and messy, is anyone here versed in real estate law? 
I'd really like to sort out this whole bridge thing. Oh, oh boy. boy. To discover more about how kids learn science and the types of misconceptions they might have, visit us online at scienceeducation.si.edu slash goodthinking.